കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം ഈദ Namaste. So today we're going to continue with Drig Drishya Vivekaha and we're going to talk about the reflection of consciousness. Text 6. Chichchaya veshato buddhau bhanam dhi stu dvidhastita ekaham kritiranya syad antakarana rupini buddhi intelligence appears to possess luminosity on account of the reflection of consciousness in it buddhi is of two kinds one is called egotism ahankriti and the other mind antakarana text 7 chayaham karayo raikyam tat paya pindavan mataha tad ahankarata datmya drehash chetana tamagat in the opinion of the wise the identity of the reflection of consciousness and ego is like the identity of a fire and a heated iron ball the body having been identified with the ego which has already identified itself with the reflection of the consciousness or self passes for a conscious entity so these are both very deep verses and i'm going to have to explain them in a little bit of technical detail to really do them justice so i'm going to refer to the commentary here The conscious self atma or brahman is self luminous. In other words, it doesn't stand on any foundation. It doesn't require any framework. It's not dependent on anything. But everything else is dependent upon it. So this is the absolute. The absolute means the source from which everything else has come there has to be an original source and it has to be full complete purna and that includes the quality of self illumination self consciousness awareness of its own awareness and this means that for the self for brahman it is its own object it is its own knowledge uh, all knowledge is contained within it so there is no need for any extraneous object therefore brahman has no desire no intention no action uh, brahman is completely pure free from duality no boundaries no identity no nothing that's why when people say brahman is one huh or it's all one <laughs> like that this is actually not correct because to say that something is one means that you're comparing it with two isn't it to brahman brahman simply is and there's no need to compare it to anything else or count one to zero or whatever brahman is without qualities and without any taint of duality now <laughs> when that brahma is reflected because it can't change huh brahman does not change because change would require duality so to produce something like consciousness which has an object which is in duality the brahman itself can't be the creator what has to happen is that somehow or other brahman becomes covered by ignorance and that's why the very first word of this verse chichchaya chichchaya means the reflection of consciousness is not consciousness directly 
It only appears to be consciousness. Just like if you have a bunch of pots of water sitting outside and the moon or the sun is rising in the sky, you can see many reflections. And the reflections look very similar to the original, except they lack the potency of the original. That potency is distributed among many reflections. So the reflection is similar to the original, but not the same. <laughs> Our problem is we accept the reflection as real. We accept, for example, the mirage in the desert as actually water. And we run after it and then we become exhausted and die from thirst. Everyone is looking for this consciousness. Everyone is looking for this beauty, this fullness, this knowledge, huh? the power that comes from pure consciousness. But nobody can have it. Why? Because they're deluded and they're searching for something false. They're searching for the reflection of consciousness and not consciousness itself. Why? Because there is a modification called mind. And mind consists of four components. Actually, the, the proper term for it is antakarana. Anta means within and karana means cause. It consists of four components, mind, intellect, reflected consciousness, and ego. So all of these things are false. They're all illusory. They're all simply mirages, but we accept them as real. We think, I am this, huh? And we're gonna get into this specific forms of this identification in the next verse. But in these two verses, what's described is the identification itself. The fact that consciousness, when it's reflected, appears to be the real consciousness, but it's not. And the example is given, a very famous example in the Vedas, of fire and a hot iron ball. If you put an iron ball in the fire and you heat it up till it's red hot, even, even hotter, white hot, and then you take it out, it has the exact same effect as fire itself. Even though it's not fire, by association with the fire, it has absorbed those qualities. And the same thing is true of the mind. The mind, uh, antakarana, to use the precise term, is not conscious. But it appears to be conscious because of its association with Brahman, the self, Atma, the consciousness. So when the consciousness is reflected in the mind, then we accept that as real. And so our intelligence, which is another part of Antakarana, turns our attention towards this reflection, which shows only the senses. Remember our diagram from the last time. It shows only the senses and the body and the objects of the world. It doesn't show the reality. It doesn't show Atma, the self or consciousness, because it's directed outward through the senses. So in this condition, we become subject to karma. Karma means we are bound to a particular body and we have to suffer the results of the activities performed in that body. And activities have a, a tremendous range, all the way from thoughts and intentions to words, name and form, huh? desires, attitudes, and of course, our specific or uh, material actions in the world. So we have to accept the results of all that karma on account of being bound by this illusion. And the bondage is totally our fault. We take the false ego, antakarana, as real 
And then we, we allow ourselves to suffer according to its karma. But actually we, the soul or self, have nothing to do with the, the body or the mind. It's only on account of identification that it appears to be so. Now, a few more points. Actually, the mind is insentient. It has no consciousness of its own. Try to understand this and try to see it in yourself. And another thing to try to see is that the ego, the sense of I am that is connected with the body, is something synthetic. It's something created by the mind. And we've gone over in previous series the Mula Pariyaya Sutta of the Buddha. And in this sutta, the Buddha describes exactly how the ego is formed. That when one has a perception through the senses, one's mind projects the idea of I into it. And then, of course, it becomes mine. Huh? So when we see, for example, the reflection of consciousness in the mind, we project I on it and we say, this is my consciousness. Huh? Whereas actually consciousness can never be the property of an individual. See, the scientists get consciousness all wrong <laughs> because they don't understand that consciousness or actually pure awareness is beyond individuality. They think that it's a, a phenomenon or epiphenomenon of the, the brain, but this is wrong. And the proof that it's wrong is that consciousness never changes. Consciousness is never, or I should say, pure awareness never changes. Consciousness has several different states, and we'll get to that later on. We've already talked about waking, dreaming, sleeping, and the fourth, turiya. But this is consciousness, not awareness. Awareness doesn't have any states. Awareness is always the same. So this awareness, or Brahman, is what we're trying to realize. And to do that, we have to use discrimination, viveka, to separate out the drik from the drishya, the seer from the seen. The seer is only Brahman. Everything else is an illusion, a reflection, a projection, an identification. And we have to observe these things in ourselves. We have to go seek them out. Once we understand the description, and by the way, in the video description, there is a lot of detail that I don't get to in the talk. And you should read the video descriptions of all these videos in this series because they contain a lot of important information that will allow you to observe these things in yourself. So when you observe them, for example, just like the Mula Pariyaya Sutta, when you observe yourself projecting the idea of I into perfectly innocent <laughs> uh, perceptions of the world, whereas there is no I actually in them, huh? when you see yourself doing this, there's no way that you can continue doing it. It's just like once you realize you have a bad habit, you can't continue it. You have to take some action and stop it, create a good habit in its place. So what we're trying to do here is to bring light into these dark, hidden corners of the mind and show how the process of the mind creates the illusion of I, a separate individual, and how simply by the process of discrimination we're separating the different qualities and uh, structures in the mind from the actual seer, Brahman, one can attain the highest self-realization. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.